have our seat. I'm so tempted to say in the spirit of the ladies, we go the Greek way. Please be taking out your pens. So I hope all of us have our pens. We have the outline, the sermon, so that we all go together and hopefully be done before two o'clock so that we can now go for the <laughs> so that we can now go for the I've had this, this meeting in the afternoon. Uh, that's on a light note. Good to see us all. And uh, I did not know that uh, today was uh, going to be a bit different. Uh, we had a good number of the men away. So as I was sitting there, I was trying to do the math. So I was asking myself, now, do I preach half a sermon? <laughs> huh? Or do I now start looking for all the lady examples? Unfortunately, but uh, we will see. We'll try and make sure we fit the women somewhere so that we all feel included. Uh, my wife, uh, Florence, is somewhere around here, as well as Mark. Uh, my son, Mark, is at that age where he's very explorative. So he will not be able to sit in one place, so he'll travel quite a bit. I know there's an elder we were traveling with over the SGR, and he was, she was really encouraging us. We went with him for, our first, for his first long-distance trip on SGR. I think even the captain of the, oh, yeah, I think called the captain, the driver of the train, must have known there's a young boy somewhere. All the ladies, the stewardess, and everyone knew there's a young boy on the train. He wanted to greet everyone, go everywhere. Ten minutes sounded like two hours. Just, we were checking, we had to fix it. <laughs> because he couldn't sleep, he was just enjoying the trip. Indeed, we are grateful to God as a family. He has kept us well, and it's also a joy to be here. I have a membership in St. Andrews. I have a secondary membership in Mairenya Nyahururu, where I come from. And I have another secondary membership here. <laughs> We really love your church. It's a beautiful church. One, it's a family kind of setting. Someone was telling me about St. Andrews. Our church is so big. Today, I don't think even some people will know I was not there. Because they would just come for the 8 o'clock service. They don't know whether I went for the 11 o'clock service. When I went for the Fisher service. When I went. It's so big and so many things that are happening here. You are just, you know each other. You even sing happy birthday to each other by name. You, you guys are blessed. You are so blessed. And every time I come here, I just see growth. This place looks beautiful. And when I hear that it's actually been put with the youth in mind, I'm so excited. Please give them that place. Let them go. Let them do whatever youth people do so that they can also grow in their own way. And when I hear men are away, and that the ladies are in charge, and those men are at peace wherever they are, clap for yourselves. I mean, that is growth. That is growth. I, I still preach. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll, I'll still preach, eh? but I, I think you guys are doing very well. Very, very well. Keep it up. May God continue increasing you. May God continue showering his favor upon you. Choir, you are a blessing. I think you have a new uniform. I'm not sure I have seen it. It's looking very nice. Very, very nice. And the ladies, you need to now... You are blessed. And actually, you are bringing the... Trust me, that Kegosho touch, I don't think English can be able to take it home. I am really not sure. So please continue with that. Continue teaching our younger generation. It's important for them to know the Greek way of worshipping God. It's also very deep in its own way. So I'm really blessed to be here and it's a joy. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we are so honored to be in your presence this morning. As we listen to your word, our prayer, and as we pick lessons from your word on mission, our prayer is that you may build us all to the glory of your name. This we pray in Jesus' name. So I believe all of us have our pens and the outline is there for us to look at. 
I was told to actually share, because we are in the season of mission, to just share with us about unlimited favor in mission. And one of the things I was telling myself is that as I'm going to be sharing with us about mission, is that it's really critical for us to appreciate that mission is not that thing that's out there that is so big that we have to do. Mission is as simple as just right there, where you work, at home, in your neighborhood, amongst your children, at your workplace, in that matatu, on the road as you're driving. And I decided to just speak two examples from the word of God. Uh, a gentleman who was a serious taxman, he used to work for the KRA, sorry, KRA of Israel. So it was the KRA of uh, Israel. I, I was, again, it's not called KRA, sorry. It would be IRA, Israel Revenue Authority. So it will be the, he used to work for the Israel Revenue Authority of their days. And as all of us know, KRA people somehow tend to be, to be very rich. Eh? Somehow. I'm not sure how, but they are blessed people. I guess maybe because they are very good with management of money. But we also know some of them are very creative. I'm sure you've seen the news of late, how they are being uh, f uh, followed closely. I have a friend of mine we schooled with who was based in Mombasa. I could not... I believe it when I saw they are being uh, they are being tracked because of what happens with uh, some of the work that they do with revenue collection and I also said look at the story of the early church and try to help us to see how we can be able to do mission right where we are praise God and so one of the things I was asking myself is that what consists of a God sent mission what would be a mission that actually God has specifically chosen for you to do. And I picked uh, five things that I want us to just help us to answer. And we'll be looking at Zacchaeus, we'll be looking at the early church. And the very first one is that I think a God sent mission is unique to me. Praise God. A God sent mission is unique just to you, yourself. One of the things I strongly believe is that God, when He made each and every one of us, He made us specifically for a purpose and for a mission. Praise God. Even if you are twins, twins or triplets or quadruplets, each of those people have a unique purpose and a mission that God has given them to do. And right now, I just want us to go, to go back to our homes, to our neighborhoods. Do you see that neighbor that really gets you angry? You know the one who comes in the morning and packs and blocks you? And when you go to wake him up to come and unblock you, he talks, he past abuses you. That neighbor, God has made him uniquely with a mission. That person you usually pass on the street who uh, took drugs and, and uh, lost his mind and now he's not well. Maybe. Maybe that person was the one who was supposed to be Sonko's deputy governor. And you realize Sonko has not found a deputy to date. Do you know that? Maybe that was the person God had already ordained for that mission. So all of us, God has a very specific mission for. And it's unique to who? To you. It is God-sized. Our mission is God-sized. And something that's God-sized. Can you try to imagine something that's God-sized? You know, can you imagine how God... Okay, let's try and imagine how God is. Or what size God is. I mean, isn't... Let's just say he's big. To him, the world is, I don't know what they say. They say it's like a, dot, a, do, a drop in a bucket. The whole world. So, something that God has for you to do, it's not small. It's big. And big is very relative here. It's big to you in terms of what God has planned. Number three is that it requires God's favor. For you to be able to accomplish the mission that God has for you, God has to be in it. Praise God. And there, I just want us to do some very quick maths. And I was telling myself, I know all of us are very good with mathematics. And I want to tell us, 50 plus 50 is what? It's 100, right? Good. Now, when it comes to kingdom mathematics of heavenly mission work, if you go to do God's mission without God in it, you'll be doing 50 plus 50, it becomes 70. Mm. you'll be doing 50 plus 50 in a kujangapi 70 and you'll be wondering what is missing what's the missing link the missing link is that God is not in the picture 
And I was looking at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was there. I mean, in today's, look at the desc description. It says he was a chief tax collector. A chief tax collector maybe is like a deputy commissioner. Hmm, Jiraine, I know Jiraine was replaced. I, I can't remember the name of the person who replaced him, but let's use it in Jiraine for purposes of my not remembering. By who? Boro, yes, good. So maybe uh, deputy, maybe he was that... He was that senior. He was maybe deputy to him, a chief tax collector. Somebody very, very senior. And the Bible actually says he was wealthy. And for purposes of today's generation, nowadays, you know, uh, uh, the uh, generation, the other, the older one, when somebody was a millionaire, it was a really big deal. Nowadays, we talk in billions. Eh? Nowadays, if you're a millionaire, I am actually shocked that our generation where we've gotten nowadays, we hear when money is stolen. It's stolen in, in billions. Do you know how many zeros a billion has? <laughs> a billion has so many zeros. It's actually a thousand millions. Some, some of us sometimes try to do math and tell ourselves, someone who has a billion like in the bank, he was going to spend even a hundred thousand a day. Do you know how many days he'll take to even finish that money? So I'm thinking Zacchaeus being a wealthy man, he was a billionaire of their day. And we'll be looking at uh, that billion discussion as we get along. But trust me, he's 50 plus 50. Being a tax, tax collector, it was coming to 70. He knew he was missing something. Praise God. And so all of us, we may be successful in our own ways. We may be doing so well. But until we fit into God's mission for our lives, we'll always be at 70. Not at a hundred. Number four in your notes, your God-sent mission outlives you. It will outlive me. It will actually go beyond your life. Even when you pass away, people will always remember that there was... Now you can feel the name. There was a you. Somebody who came and did so much. And yeah, I'm actually reminded of a very young friend of mine. He used to live just past here in the Matasia area of Ngong. And he was called Andrew, Andrew Ashira. We schooled with him in Kagumo. And uh, after school, we went our different ways. But at, at some point in the last couple of years, we, we came together. We met again. And uh, he always used to call me Kapi. I was the cap uh, assistant uh, library captain. So you always used to call me captain. And I remember Andrew. And Andrew had, in, in, he passed away sometime this year. And he had a bit of a, you can call it a short life, because he was barely 35. But when I sat back and tried to reflect about the life of Andrew, he was one young man who was on earth and on a mission. Praise God. If I, let me just try and help us understand how Andrew was. Andrew was so passionate about ministry and God's work, Every church he used to get into, he started in Anglican. There's an Anglican church somewhere around Ngong. There he rose all the way to become an Anglican elder. And I think Anglican, in the Anglican church there are elders, but it's a bit different from Presbyterian. And he felt now his work there is done, he left. He came to St. Andrew's, my church. And I remember he came, he came to my service. Uh, I'm in charge of one of the services. He helped us to start the small group ministry. And the moment the small group ministries had taken off and they were doing well, he left. He went to the church school. And in the church school, he did so well to the point that by, when he passed away, the person who called me to tell me that Andrew has passed away is the church school elder. Yet, Andrew was such a close friend to me. The church school elder actually called me, I've told you, no, a gentleman called Andrew. I mean, no, Andrew. Andrew unfortunately passed away. I didn't. He was the one who told me because of how close he had gone. And even in addition to do all the work that he was doing in church school in our place, he went to their local church in uh, Matasia. There's a, there's a church there, I think. And, and, I don't know if it's in Joromuni. I think it's in Joromuni. It's in Gong. Oh, sorry, there's another one that's past Gong. I went there. It's a very nice church, old dish with a very big compound. I went there for the service. I can't remember the name. Matasia. Matasia. Now, that was now his local church. Even there... Whenever he was not in St. Andrews, he used to attend there. He went and found a TE class. He did all of the TEs and finished. He went to Nairobi University. 
he did two masterses. I remember his graduation. You know the way as we, we hold a book, the graduation book, the one you, you toil so hard to do. He had two. He graduated with two masterses. And he was doing uh, masters in mathematics. You know those complicated mathematics? By the time he was passing on, he had done so much and he had left such an impact. To date, I, I still remember Andrew. And I always ask myself, my goodness. That young man, one, he, he never used to like the limelight. He always used to like serving in the background. So one of the things he used to avoid even in St. Andrews, because I'm a leader, he kind of used to avoid. And I even tried to even make him a deacon, he refused. He declined. He said, me, I'm comfortable, I'll serve where I am. And I remember any time I needed anything done, it's Andrew would call. Like there was a time I needed some people bought for all our daily breads. I just told Andrew, I need five daily breads. Just go find them and bring and give to these people. A wonderful young man. So one of the things that I appreciate about when you're in God's mission is that it outlives you. Even if God calls you home on any day, people will always remember what you lived for. Praise God. Let's go on to the next part. It's not just about me. It's about others. Whatever God has called you to do on this earth, look at Zacchaeus. He had made all the money. In fact, if he wanted to go, he could go to anywhere and live anyhow. But still, he felt something was missing. And all of the things I do, I work in, a, in Stanbic, Stanbic Bank. I'm in a department called Wealth and Investment. Wealth and Investment, we handle a unique kind of clients. A very unique kind of clients. We, we handle clients who are the wealthy people. And wealthy, we are talking about, let me not give the figures, but basically, we are talking about people who are doing relatively well. So one of the things I've been trying to do is to try to understand how they made their wealth and what really they value the most. And one of the things that is coming out very strongly with most of these people is that one, they are already there. These are people who can easily call you and tell you to pay their credit card a million. <clears throat> Somebody whose credit card is like 1.5 million. That's how much they spend. And you know credit card, the one which you, you have and you are, you are very careful about how you spend it. I'm told one of them one day just went and bought a jewel for 6 million and paid using his credit card. And for, I mean, for them, the money is not really an issue. But one of the things I appreciate about most of them, after they have already reached there, their biggest passion is how they can be able to give. So you find most of them, and if you check, especially in the developed world, people like Bill Gates, who is among the wealthy, wealthiest people on this planet today, people like Warren Buffett, one of the wealthiest people on this planet, what are they very known, much known, like even in Africa? Bill and Melinda Foundation, some of us may have heard of it. It's actually committed to eradicate, eradicate malaria. They have actually taken all their wealth, and what are they doing? They are giving it away. So you realize, it's really not about you. Your God-given mission is really not just about you. It's about that neighbor. Maybe you are the solution to help that neighbor to be able to move to the next level. It's about your colleague. It's about your, your, that person you've always been passing on the street. And that person, maybe all he needs is something very small. You know, I talked to another friend of mine. He's called Ruto. He's from uh, Rift Valley. And he told me he's amazed what 5,000 shillings can do. There's somebody in the village who was just struggling, struggling. So he decided, I'll just give him 5,000 and hope he's going to be able to find his way. That person went and bought a small calf with 5,000. Now, he distributes milk in the entire village. He's almost about to become, to set up his own dairy. And chances are, if Ruto doesn't watch out, he might even outdo him. Praise God. So you might be just sitting there and yet you are the solution to why Kenya is struggling like this. Please, don't sit on what God has called you to do. Go out there and do something with it to make the world a better place. Number two, how can I identify my God-ordained mission? Maybe you are there and you are telling yourself, how can I know what God has prepared or what God wants me to do? Because I'm sure most of us know that Kenyans, we are usually very good at copying. Eh? You're in your neighborhood, the person who goes and decides they are going to start selling guashe at the corner, what happens? <laughs> 
Within two months, there are 10, 10 guashi shops there. Eh? The person who decides I'm going to put an, an Mpesa shop or an agency, so I, I become the very common. I think the ones which I think really affected most of us were the days for the quail eggs. Eh? <laughs> Can you remember those days? <laughs> they were very humbling days. Very, very humbling. Right now, I think we can remember with a bit of uh, humor, but it's, it's really not... <laughs> but it's really not funny. <laughs> that queer story. <laughs> it's really not funny. It's, it's actually not funny at all, you know. Remember, they were being told that quail eggs heals how many diseases. <laughs> being told quail eggs, did you hear? So, it's like 40 diseases. And you eat quail eggs. I think the thing even is, <laughs> it doesn't <just> cure AIDS. <laughs> You've been told quail eggs, they cure so many diseases. And suddenly all of us were expert quail. <laughs> <laughs> I will never forget this person who got tired of his quails. <laughs> so one day he just went and opened the door and just told them, shoo, go, just go. He just shoot them away. Hmm? But I know most of, or those of us who uh, had studied the quails in, uh, know something interesting about quails. Eh? They'll go, but what happens in the evening? <laughs> now, we are discussing about how to identify our God-ordained mission. Now, five things just to help you identify. Number one, what pains you? What is it that actually when you see it, you just feel you are not at peace? Number two, what pleases you? What is it that when you do, you feel so happy? When others are just feeling happy like this, you are feeling happy like this. When you just do it, you just go home smiling and beaming with joy. What is it that when you do, you feel like you are so fulfilled? And always remember this uh, uh, um, story, this, uh, what was it, a series that we used to watch when we were very young of a dog called the littlest hobo. Who, who is this? my generation can remember the littlest hobo? It used, to, it used to be a dog that all it used to do in every episode when it starts, it would go to the, uh, uh, just come sit here to Motero and go to a, a compound and find people who need help. Then it would help them. Then as soon as the trouble is over, the situation is over, it would just walk, go and leave them. And it used to have a very nice song that used to go with something like, there's a voice that keeps on calling me down the road, something like that. And I used to really admire that dog because that dog was really on a mission. It would come, help someone, and just go. It never asked for anything. It would just help them and move on to the next thing. And my prayer is, identify that something that pains you. Identify that something that really makes you happy. When you do it, you just... I mean, you don't even need to be paid. When you do it, you just feel like, you don't even need to be recognized. You just feel fulfilled. Number three, where has God positioned you? I mean, there's a very good reason why God made sure you are born in Kenya, in Karen, in Motero, today. There's a reason why you are not born in China. So that right now you'll be talking, koro, 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 yang, yong, piang. This is the reason why you are not born in America. So that now you'll be talking like the black Americans. Yao and the rest. This is the reason why God has not created you and made you be born in, I don't know, in, in the Kipchoge Keino area, Uko Eldoret, where people are just born running. <laughs> this is the reason why God has created you and put you in PCA Motero today. Praise God. So it's up to you to be able to identify it and to use it because God has placed you there for a reason. So where has God put you? And what can you do with where God has put you? Number five. Whatever it is that God has called you to do, enjoys God's provision. By God's provision, I mean you have a burden for something and somehow God always has a way of making a way for you to be able to have it done. Praise God. So if you are there and you are like Zacchaeus, you are doing so well in everything else, but you are still feeling like, no, there's something that's still missing, I think you need to sit down with yourself, call a meeting with yourself, and look at these five things. Ask yourself, what is it 
And you remember my wife the other day was asking me the same question. She was telling me, we need to start asking ourselves, what can we actually do to make the world a better place? And I remember he told, she told me, because she has studied me for quite a while, she told me one of the things that pains me, that really, really pains me, is that I don't know what happened with our culture, but somehow, somehow, we created a culture where men, men can easily just walk away from their relationship, from their responsibilities, and nothing happens to them. I, 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 don't, I, I don't understand. I, I really don't. And I have some friends of mine who are single mothers who have men, men, father of those children, and they are somewhere. They are just somewhere. Yet somebody can, 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 can do that and walk away. One of them actually told me that the other day they met with the father of the child in town. They were together with the baby. And the father of the child gave the child a hundred bob. That really pains me. And I, 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 I don't know. I usually tell my wife, I wish. I wish I don't know I was a judge. I wish. I would literally take all these men, beat them up thoroughly. <laughs> Really beat them up. And then, now make a rule. Sorry, I'm just, it's me. It's just in my mind. Then they make a ruling that all the men who have children, all of them, all of, they take their children, they make sure they pay school fees for them, they make sure they provide for them. I don't know where our culture went wrong and made our men feel like they can actually walk away when they have responsibilities. I, that one really pains me, and I've been asking myself what I can do. I really don't know whether to start a feeder for men, or I, 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 but I'm feeling that men, we can do better. Praise God. There are so many children out there who their fathers just are somewhere, and they, I, I just don't even understand. How do they even sleep at night? How do they just continue living? One of my friends who is a single mother right now is trying to pay school fees for her child, and I'm always telling myself, what, what is, where is this man? I'm, I'm short of telling, let me find him, I go and put my, sorry, this is a Bible. I, I, I'm just trying to, and for my wife, her passion is young people and teenagers. Right now she's working in a um, um, comprehensive care clinic, dealing with a lot of HIV people. And every day she tells me, let me just call it a horror story about our teens. Every day, she comes and tells me, I met this teenager, She's, he's around 18, 19, just after college, and I was asking him, how did you contract HIV? And that child was actually, that young child was actually telling her, let me try and remember, every time when I was in high school, I used to have three girlfriends. So first term, second, so which of them? Can you, you know, my wife looks, she shakes her head. Wonders, you are not even old enough to understand sexuality, and yet you are talking about three per term. It's really serious. Praise God. And it's a sad situation. How our young people right now are exploring and exploring. So I was asking her the other day, now how, does, how do you tell this young child that when he gets to 25 and wants to settle down, you can actually have one wife and live happily ever after? How? So please, can we find what God has told us to do and try go out there and do it? Because our world today really needs a lot of mission-driven people. Praise God. Now, the last part of my sermon. How do I live my God-ordained mission? Just some five things. The very first one is that you need connection to Christ through prayer and communion. If you look at the early church from the, the passage that we read from Acts chapter 2, verse 42, 47... It's very interesting how the church grew. They were not doing anything that is so dramatic, that is so out of this world. They just used to meet and to pray together and to fellowship. So it's really important that we make sure that we make our connection to Christ through prayer and communion, one with one another and also with Christ, just to have our relationship with Christ strong and, and bold. I look at myself and uh, where I'm working right now, when I was at NIC, I used to be called pastor. When I moved from NIC to Stanbic, I didn't tell anyone that I'm actually born again. I didn't tell anyone that I'm a Christian. I didn't tell anyone. But even there, people are still, they have already started calling me pastor. 
in the canteen where I usually go to buy my, my, my food, those guys are always confessing to me what they did over the weekend. And for me to rebuke them. And to tell them you, you should have gone to church. You should have done one, two, three. Praise God. So God has placed us in places where we can be able to do something and it's important that we remain connected to Christ. That we will be able to minister. Connection to others through fellowship and it's so amazing. Here, I think here I want to give Motero 150%. Here you are doing very well. You have the men's fellowship, you have the youth, you have the ladies. Please keep it up. When you are there for each other, when you support one another, trust you me, all the people out there are going to come and ask you, by the way, there's something very different about you. And I want it. They'll tell you there's something very different about your fellowship. I want to come and join it. You don't even need to go and tell them. They will bring themselves continuous growth and learning and you'll see the early church kept on growing and it's important that we keep on growing and i think here 100 percent you're doing very well you are always growing you're always learning commitment to the great commission always remembering that god has put us here and jesus when he was when he was leaving us he told us go ye into all the world and make disciples of all men teaching them the life of obedience and baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. That is our great commission. It's our calling that we need to have that in mind as we go out there. And lastly, always content to serve just as I am. In the vestry, when uh, we were getting ready to come, we were discussing about the challenges that the church is facing today. And honestly, if you look at the church today, it's something that's really worrying. There's this guy who has been in the media quite a bit. He's called Nganga, Nganga somebody. Nganga of Neno, Neno Evangelism. I, 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 I honestly don't understand him. My wife is a psychologist. Her, she's concluded he may, be, he may be unwell. He may actually be having a, a, a condition. He may actually be unwell. But I look... <clears throat> And look at him, and I'm asking myself, what, where are we not, are we missing something? I look at, I don't know whether you've been watching, reading the newspapers, SDA, of all other churches, SDA. SDA are having issues. Serious issues. But I was telling someone that I'm, I'm thinking that we have gotten to that point whereby we feel we can only serve God when all of us are elders. Or we can only serve God when all of us are senior bishops. You saw even uh, Awori is also having issues. Even Awori, his deputy bishop, decided to do something that was not very good. But even him. We have gotten to that point where we feel that we can only serve God if we are somewhere else, not where we, we are. Praise God. My challenge for us as, I, as we are coming to the end is that just be content serving God just as you are and just where god has put you one of the things i always tell myself as i'm studying I, as i told you where i'm working i've been studying billionaires people who are really wealthy and one of the things that most of them have done to get to where they are by the way it's really not it's not rocket science let's just ask ourselves mogoko the one who passed away some years back how did he make his wealth do we know he was keeping chicken. Keeping what? Goko. Goko. No tawe goko. See, we know chicken. I mean, so, if all he was doing was keeping chicken, honestly, and he became a what? A billionaire from keeping chicken. I know all of us here, we have ever tried keeping chicken or something. And we are, we are I know we may have some zeros to our wealth, eh? but it may not be near, near where he is. There's another one who died, and I think I was being told he used to be Sukumam Kokoteni. Was it? Uh, was it? There's someone who passed away also and left a huge estate. And I'm being told he used to be Kokoteni somebody. So, all I'm trying to say in a nutshell is that if God wants you to be a billionaire, you will be a billionaire. He'll just take whatever it is you're doing and he'll just prosper it. Because to God, whether you are a millionaire, whether you are a billionaire, to him they are just zeros. And by the way, God, today, if he decides that my bank account is going to have a billion, all he needs to do is say. 
He's just going to say the word. Because you know God can't lie, so the world has to fit into what he says. So if he says, the billions will just show up. I'll just go to withdraw in my ATM, and my receipt will refuse to fit the zeros. And I'll be there wondering. So if God actually wants you to be whatever it is you want to be, he's going to make it happen. So please don't kill yourself trying to become a billionaire. If God wants you to be, he'll take the chicken you are rearing there, and he'll prosper them. And suddenly you'll become a billionaire. Praise God. So please, let's serve God where he has placed us. There's a reason why God has not made you a billionaire. There's a reason why God hasn't given you all those many things that you think you need to have so that you can be able to preach. Just take your Bible, go to your neighbor, preach to them. You've done what God put you on this earth to do. Praise God. Take your education, serve God with it. If God wants you to be to become a national, global something, he will make it happen. He owns the whole world. Praise God. He knows where you are. He placed you there because he wants you to grow to become a great person. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your lessons this morning. My prayer is that all of us are going to be challenged to be able to take up this season of missions, to ask ourselves where we can be able to serve you, where you have placed us, so that we can glorify you and please you and edify your name and be able to reach out to this society that we are living in today that is so, so lost, that you can use us to be able to reach out to them and to touch them to your glory. My prayer, Lord, is for all of us who are gathered here, that you will help us, oh God, just like Zacchaeus, to seek you, to come looking for you, so that you can be able to feed that gap that is still outstanding. And my prayer is that all of us are going to touch us in our unique way. I know there are hands here that are lifted in their hearts, and people who are telling you they want to know their purpose. My prayer is that you'll help them be able to identify the place where you put them so that they can serve you. And even those amongst us who do not know you as their Lord and Savior, our prayer today is that you'll help them to know you so that their mathematics can add up, so that their 50 and 50 can become 100. So that whatever it is they are doing, they can be able to accomplish it because they are in your mission. This is our prayer of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. We are so blessed, uh, Elder Ashida. May the Lord continue using you. We are so blessed. Uh,